Okay, folks, welcome back. All right, so we're going to be revisiting model number one. And as we go through each year, we will revisit these individual models, and I'll give you a amplification and a further refinement on what you should be applying to the foundational study. So in other words, each price action model has its individual foundational premise. Now, that's not the entire, I guess, nuts and bolts approach to it. It's just the what, what is it that makes you want to engage price with that style or, or a particular model? Uh, obviously, things can be refined and tweaked using the material from the mentorship and by way of experience using it. Uh, but it's not important initially once you complete the mentorship core content, to throw everything into your model. Uh, as you can see, when I do my analysis, I don't bring in every possible tool. Uh, you don't see me doing SMT overlays. You don't do any um, comparative relationships with Intermarket. I'm just taking small pieces because I don't want to communicate the the assumption that you have to have everything in your model. You don't. Uh, there are tools that are very useful that I refer to when it's applicable. Um, the, the necessity for everything being in, in every model is not the case. And I believe that's the reason why most people uh, have hardships with the content because they're trying to fit every possible thing that you've learned about into their trading plan and I had several members in the first group and now the second group of completed charter members in other words those individuals that completed 12 months they have sent me their trading plan and one gentleman had a 115 page trading plan uh, admittedly as I told him in his email <laughs> Uh, and this, with no disrespect intended, uh, I, it's no way I could sit down and read that. Uh, I, I mean, I guess I could eventually, but my trading plan literally is on about like a back of a business card. And if you remember back on Baby Pips, I gave you that. It was the article, here's my card. And you want to be able to put everything that you do with your model, you need to be able to write it on the back of a business card. Now, obviously, that assumes a great deal of abbreviated understanding. In other words, we don't have to say um, every possible tool, what specific things we're looking at. If we just say, I'm looking at hard time frame institutional order flow, and I want to trade into inefficiencies and trade out of the position with external range liquidity. And I want to do that on a scalping basis. And I want to do it primarily on Monday, Tuesdays, and or Wednesdays with an occasional Thursday, leaving some portion of the positions on when profitable to capture the larger range. Even though I start to trade as a scalper, I always leave a leader in. That way, if there's an expansion that was unexpected or if I get quote-unquote lucky, it helps pay for all of the little dings and mistakes that I will make in my trading now, I can say all that on the back of a business card. That's a trading model. Now, obviously, risk parameters, how much are you risking, uh, what's your account size, all that's something that you work out on a personal level. But if everyone understood what was taught in the mentorship, what I just outlined is a complete and sound trading plan or model. Now, obviously... You have to understand what institutional order flow is as we define it here and what we're looking for for external range liquidity for targeting basis. So when you understand that, it makes the overall process a lot easier and more concise. And it doesn't need to be a PhD level outline in terms of a trading plan. Because you really want your trading to be simplified. And I give you the content and the understanding because this is what is necessary by way of utilizing 
experience, when to refer to certain things, when not to worry, worry about them at all. And as you can see, we have survived without COT data. While the government shut down, you know, we were looking at things in price action that still didn't have any influence whether or not we saw bullish or bearishness on the commercial positions in our pairs or the underlying futures markets for those pairs. So do you need to worry about whether or not I approve of your model once it's fleshed out? No, because you're going to grow comfortable with whatever tools that you work together as a price action model for yourself. Obviously, if it's utilizing my concepts and my teachings, I'm going to you know, indirectly approve it because you're using my content. But you don't need to send me emails with your complete trading plan because I'm not going to shoot holes in it. I'm not going to give you a high five and say that's the winning one because you have to utilize it. And then it will tell you whether or not it's a good plan. It doesn't matter what I say in an email or if I say verbally or in a tweet response, anything like that. It does not matter what ICT or anyone else says if you find consistency with the model. Do not look outwardly for approval. You will find the approval with the utilization of it and its sample size and the data you get from studying it and using going forward data, not just looking backwards. Okay, so that's the part that's hard. Now the charter members that arrived here, this is the hard part. You went through the easy part. It seemed like a hard, <laughs> it's a lot of stuff to, to study. You got to go back and look at it, but this is the hard part. You got to sit down and start fleshing out what you are going to do. Now, we talked about in Model 1's foundational study the utilization of swing points and waiting for swing highs and swing lows to form and buying when a swing high is broken and selling short when a swing low is broken. That is the underlying simplest way to keep people that are completely new to trading uh, on the right side of long-term institutional order flow. There's going to be times when that is not going to be as precise. Uh, and that's what you saw on free tutorial level and baby pip stuff. It's a good training wheel to start people with. And that's how we started the initial model. Uh, this, this particular teaching and for our installment for, for 2019 is going to refine the study of what we're seeing in price and it will precede the formation of the swing points. So it's not a matter of we're waiting around for a swing point to form anymore. Now we understand that the swing point will form at the ideal location, i.e. a swing low. If you, the lowest you can buy in a swing low before a rally, that's the ideal entry point. So while I try to teach new students to price action, a comfortable level of looking for the overall draw on liquidity, on a higher time frame and or institutional order flow on that time frame, i.e. weekly or daily. Um, for scalping, uh, you want to be able to get in there right when it's feeling the most bearish and or most bullish in respect to um, buying and selling. If we look at the New Zealand dollar, this is a daily chart of this particular pair, and we're looking at the elements of premium to discount. Okay, so you want to be able to utilize the PD array matrix in in deference to where we are relative to a premium or discount. We start our analysis on a daily chart, and we don't require at this point now, because you've gone through core content, and the first members have gone through the full year of looking at the foundational study and applying it to their charts. The next level and the new charter members have the benefit of not having to go through that first year. So you get a kind of like a, an advantage over the first group here because they had to use a full calendar year before coming to this lesson. So it is what it is. Uh, there's other ways I could have done it, but without pulling my hair out, <laughs> I'm just going to do it this way and deliver it this way. So when we look at price action, 
okay, what we're looking for on a higher time frame is where price is in terms of the premium or discount range or matrix. So when we look at price like this, this huge dynamic uh, up close candle, there was a lot of displacement in here. It caused a buy side imbalance, a sell side inefficiency. That was essentially cleaned up with this drop down in here. We don't need this to frame it, but it helps. Okay, it helps. When this low forms and rallies back through, this swing high in here, once that's broken, market structure is essentially bullish. Even though it's traded all the way back down to here, it's bullish. Why? Because we had a larger PDRA matrix being the low to high. We traded all the way down to a discount there. And then we rallied through, broke a swing high, institutional overflow bullish, until it reached a measure of premium that required a retracement lower. We have a bearish order block. We also have a bearish order block in here that was recapitalized right in here. Trades softer. In other words, there's a retracement in here. The original model's foundational presentation talked about having the optimal trade entry for the New York Open. Nothing has changed. We're still utilizing that same model here. But what are we looking at? What are we seeing in here? We're seeing the underlying pattern that sets up key institutional volatility. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Let me pull this up. So when we are in a premium and the market is had, has traded up into some measure of a, a premium array. So what we're looking for in price action, we're not trying to um, second guess or, or guess rather where the swing highs and swing lows are going to form, we're anticipating them. Okay, so what we're looking for is an underlying market structure that is highly probable to present large injections of volatility in a directional bias. Okay, so what that looks like is here, if we have a premium, in other words, and we're in a market that has traded up, so we are by our definition, overbought. We don't need in, in indicators to do that. But relative to the, the present range that we're dealing in, using basically month five content, the way we define our underlying market structure, so we have a high probability scenario for bearishness, we wanna see a high that's rated. Once that high is rated, those stops have been taken and or they've engineered buy side liquidity for false breakouts. There are tra traders that are trapped up here. Okay, so they have now someone on the other end of their position. So their counterparty offering buy side liquidity, but to do that, they have to be a seller. So they're offering sell side liquidity. As price drops down, if they have a sweet entry place up here, why would they let their book go to a lesser profit or lose that profit once we're in a premium? Any retracements back up are going to be shallow. Okay, so we don't necessarily need a run all the way back up to here like we'd see a high to low and then a 62 to 79 percent tracement level, optimal trade entry. That's why they never work. Because if it does go up there, this is going to get ran out and this is going to be continuation higher. Okay, so when we're looking at, and you'll just have to have a loss there, because I know some of you are probably thinking, okay, well, what if we see this pattern here and we get stopped out? Then you had a trade that got stopped out. You don't learn 100% trading here. You learn high probability. So the context is when we're looking for shorts, we want to see the underlying price structure do this. We have a high, run the high, break down, a short-term low is taken out, and then we trade back up into here. Essentially, it's the breaker. The swing points are not necessary. In other words, we don't wait for them. We want to trade at the level 
10, 20, 30 pips above the high, short, if we can get some overlapping uh, analysis ideas to support that, time of day, day of week. And then in here, we want to be trading as price returns back to the breaker, not waiting for the swing high to form. Now, when you do this style of trading, you'll see that you'll get the better entry points and you can wait for the swing points to form to support the idea. Okay, so there's a difference, much like when I first learned about the opening price by way of Larry Williams, he wanted to be a buyer after price rallied above the opening price a certain degree. I want to be buying below the opening price, at the opening price or below, ideally. That's high probability. Well, much like I taught in the foundational premise to Model 1, we now have the, the higher form of it without requiring the swing points. Everything's reversed when we're below the equilibrium of the current dealing range. If we're in a discount, the ideal scenario for buying is we want to see a low that's violated. Okay, Once they run those sell-side liquidity, they engineer breakout artists that want to sell short on breakout and or sell-side liquidity on assumed long positions in here. They're going to have a sell stop right here, protecting that position. And price goes down in there. They play counterparty, big displacement, breaks the high, so market structure now is bullish, return back to the breaker. This is the highest form of market structure in terms of probability that you're going to find. If you just stick to situations like this, it doesn't mean you're not going to have losing trades. It doesn't mean you're not going to do it wrong. It means that in a 90% bracket, the highest probable points of entry are going to have this market structure here or this market structure here relative to the current dealing range. Okay, And if you start that dealing range from a higher time frame, i.e. the daily chart, because most of the banking um, or interbank deals that take place by way of technical analysis and trading, they're all formed on the daily relative to the open, high, low, and close. And the last 20 trading days, the last 40 trading days, and the last 60 trading days. And that IPTA data range is dynamic. It always moves. As we go forward in the calendar, everything just goes back 20, 40, 60. I do not count Sundays as a reminder. And that's what these S's are delineating here. So if we're looking at price action right here, okay, so we had this scenario. We are in a discount. Let me show you what it looks like. We have the range. When we're looking at ranges, we have to incorporate the wicks. And if we're doing optimal trade entries, we'd only use the bodies of the candles to get the core volume. Low to high. Here's 50. So we are in a discount. We closed in a liquidity void down into a discount. Price rallies through. This swing high is what I would look at, but you can use this one. There's no difference. Okay, inside this area here, whichever swing high, whichever one you choose, that one has to be broken. Once it's broken to the upside, we wait for it to come back in to that same area. That's this. Here's the low, previous low, right there. We have a little bit of a run. We drop down. We're in a deep discount relative to the dealing range on the daily from this low to this high, then price rallies. We can be a buyer down here. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But if you're looking for quote unquote confirmation, but not waiting for swing points to form, you wait for this. We want to see the displacement. It shows energy. Up here, there may be an instance where it doesn't get back down here, and that's okay. Because we're only interested in buying back down here. Why? Because there's a bullish order block at that point. It's a bullish breaker at that point. And we also return back to what level? The 50%. So now we're back at equilibrium or discount. So the probabilities increase when we use the PDA rate matrix that we learned about in month number five. Once we apply that concept, then suddenly all the swing points that form are going to be energetic. Okay, we're going to see the swing points create movement. And that's what unlocks market structure. 
this over here relative to premium to discount and this overall price structure. Now, if you think about what I've taught you, I taught you breakers in the free tutorials. I taught you order blocks in the free tutorials. I taught you market structure breaks in the tutorials. In month five, I gave you PD rate matrix in relative terms to the dealing range, premium to discount. When we apply this, everything comes together perfectly. It dovetails beautifully. When you see it in price, everything clicks. It's, it's one of those epiphanies that you have or aha moments. I'm more or less robbing you of what you would have seen with this one. But if you go back to your charts, you'll see that there is a plethora of these occurring. Now, this is a daily chart. There's going to be times when we do not have a clear market structure on the daily. We can drop down to a four hour chart and it may assist because we're scalping. It's still OK. If we don't see anything on a four hour chart, you can drop down into a one hour chart and nothing less than that. And we can utilize a one hour chart. And if we have these same conditions here, day of week phenomena overlaps, we get scenarios where we can be a buyer or seller for a scalp using what the original premise was for model number five. Now, if we take this dealing range away, because you've already outlined really what the point of it all was, we add now the new dealing range in here, because inside this parent price swing from this low to high, now we had this run here. And we, we want to see it come back to this price point because it's this pattern here. This low to this high is our new present dealing range. Low to high. Let me slide over here so you can see it. There we are. And I'm not quite on there yet. There we are. So we have the high and the low defined. Price comes back down into, what is this? Again, equilibrium. So this is a, again, high probability scenario. So we've defined the range in terms of PD array matrix. We are at an equilibrium to discount. This should give us a buy. But now, for entry purposes, how do we calibrate the FIB for that? I remember the pattern we used for this model was optimal trade entry. We use the bodies of the candle. We have the lower of the bodies on this candle with the open. So the open on this candle is lower than the close on this down close candle. So we start there and we drop this down to the highest close. Right here, I'm a little higher than I should be. There we are. Bingo. 62% retracement level. So there's our level we're looking for. Once you have this on your chart, all you're doing is you're going to wait for a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday to trade down into that. We've defined it from a month five content basis. We use the IPTA data ranges. So on this day here, looking back, what's the high in between? It's here. This is your last high. So we're going to target this, and we're going to stay with that bias, bullish, until this is ran out or this high is taken out. Okay? So now we're dropped down into a 15-minute time frame. Okay, so here's the 15-minute time frame. Here's Sunday's trading for that particular week. Monday. We don't get down to the optimal trade entry. We're crouching right above that. And then finally on Tuesday, watch what happens. Tuesday, we drop down into it here. Bingo. This candle, right when it starts to show energy, what time of day is this? New York open. So as price hits this level, you can be a buyer there. Scalp it looking for what? Well, you're going to start looking back inside that PD array matrix and using the IPTA data ranges, last 20 days, first objective is going to be what? Previous day's high. Remember, that's the targeting tool. We look at previous daily high if we're trying to exit on a long. Right up in here, previous day's high. Right there. So the high is 67.41.
So we're just going to drop a line on that there. And then we have the previous Friday's high. So we'll put a line on that. And then we have the Wednesday of the previous week's high. So the market should target that. And we'll stick with that for now. So we have our New York Open scalping set up here. Buy. Price runs up. Surges up. Clears that Monday's high. Clears the Friday's high. Retraces. Runs the Wednesday of the previous week's high here. Comes back down, finds some support at the Wednesday high. Look at all the price action around that Wednesday high that we outlined. Go back and watch the recording. And then look at the response again. Boom, takes off. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. What day is this? Wednesday. It's classic for a buy data form when we're bullish on the 20th of January. Let's go back out to the daily. Okay, that's this day here, the 30th. Right there. It found support at this day's high daily highs and lows. Everything that we see that takes place on high energy movement is going to be found on a daily chart. Old daily highs, old daily lows. Inside the, the last 20 days, look back on this day here. This was an old daily high. This was an old daily high. This was an old daily high. Sunday's not counted. Monday. All the way back to this day here on the 15th of January 2019. The high on that candle comes in at 68.474, 68.494. So we cleared that high as well on that one single candle. Look how much energy it was in that one single day just to run the up to data range here. Then what does it do? It consolidates, it gravitates around that Wednesday high and then another area or run on liquidity. But we went beyond the scope of the 20 day look back. So everything's bullish still. So what do you do at this point? You could use the last 40 days look back for your analysis. And that takes us back to here. So we have the rejection block here in the form of that last up close candle, closing price or the high. And the rejection block is the close 69.37.9. 69.40. So we cleared the, the rejection block and then look at the rea reaction there. Okay, so the way we flesh out the setups for scalping is not always going to be set up on a five minute basis or a 15 minute basis. The setup can still form from the higher time frame. But if we don't have it on the higher time frame, but we drop down to the lower time frame, to get it if we don't see it on the higher time frame. The higher time frame builds the, the, the premise or the bias. But we have to include this price structure in here. If we don't have this element behind price action movements, you're actually trading with a disadvantage because we have a built-in um, driver for volatility because when it's in a premium and it runs a high and drops down, breaks market structure, they have traders up here trapped. They're not going to want to get back or very close to that high. So what's the benefit? They're probably going to move lower. So if they're going to be moving lower, we can be a bear. We can sell short in the New York Open. So when we look for these scenarios, this is just one pair. You want to do this through all the pairs that you look at in your basket. Remember, we had a, um, a small basket. Um, suggested to you and get like one cross in there too that uh, like the beast like pound yen if you want to do that one or um, uh, euro yen or you know something of that effect uh, they, they could be a, a catalyst for a scalping scenario 
we're not trying, again, we're not trying to get a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday trade and sometimes Thursday of every week. That's not the point here. That's not what we're doing. I'm trying to f formulate a, a method for you to use as a foundation to find that one 25 to 30 pip scalp every week. Because if you just did that and you made 2% return on that trade every single week, you're compounding your money over 100% a year. $1,000 is over a $1 million in 10 years. And that's if you just do $1,000 and you never reinvest. If you were to think about it like this and say, this model is sufficient for me to do 6% uh, a month, and I'm going to try to make 1.5% uh, compounded every week, and I'm going to invest $1,000 initially, and then I'm going to put $25 a week into it. And that's going to be my self-directed IRA. Now, the problem is you will most likely have taxation if you don't have it set up as an IRA, like a self-directed IRA. Some, um, some IRAs in the states will allow you to trade Forex. I am not going to counsel you to tell you which one that is. You have to take the initiative to go and research that yourself. I do not do anything with brokers. I don't do anything with telling people trade with this firm. I, I don't do that. The only people I tell in a professional capacity for um, like taxes, okay, and that's Green Trader. Everyone knows who that is, and that gentleman will help you out with uh, for the states. If you're outside the states, I it's who knows. I don't know. There's no way for me to know every possible thing for every country and where you are in your location. But as it relates to using this model, it's very very simple. It may seem complex the first time you look at it. But you know all these things if you've gone through the mentorship. And we're only looking for one setup per week. So if we go back into that 15 minutes, this setup here alone, that one day, that was, if you were using as a scalp, there's no problem capturing what you would need for the week in that range. It's done. And that was the nice energetic move for the week, for that particular week. If we go scrolling back the week prior, there's the Tuesday entry. Here, but you're buying it down at the low because of the elements that we use in the daily time frame. And we used all the mentorship perspective, not just a myopic view of swing points. So down in here, everything that would have been utilized for a high probability entry, we outlined and look at the energy in it. Later in the day, it takes off. So again, we have more continuation on the next day, and then we had a little bit more follow-through on the following day, but then have deep retracement. If you're just capturing small portions of price action every single week and you compound that, you have no idea the potential growth and velocity there is behind this. And we're not taking large trades, and we're not taking a lot of trades. We're not trying to day trade every day. We're not trying to scalp every day. We're looking for one specific setup. And this is actually the model I sit down with when people were interested in coming and being with me for a week. This was – I sat down down with this, and I said, look, this is what you do. You want to look for this, this, and this, and this. The problem is – and you're probably having that same itch right now – is I want to do more. <laughs> and my question is, is why? If you're new, why would you want to do anything more? Slow your roll. Learn this. Do this well. Because if you can find one setup per week like this, you don't need to get that 100 pip move of a one shot, one kill, or a 50 pip or the 75 pip uh, haul. You don't need it. You don't need that. There's nothing wrong with aspiring to get to that or you know 500 pips a month for a swing trader. There's, not, there's nothing wrong. I'm not trying to disparage that. I'm trying to just remind you the low-hanging fruit, the easier objectives – is where you should be starting. And too many of you want to go to one shot, one kill because you hear me say, that's what I'd like to do. And I understand you're learning from me and I'm the educator here, but don't try to mimic me. You'll be a better trader than me sooner if you listen to all the things I'm telling you to do because you won't go through all of those muddy waters that I had to go through for years. I'm telling you how to skip all of that and get on a faster learning curve and you'll be able to do far more than I've done in my years if you just listen. But you start in a humble beginning, and this is one of them. There is, if you ask me, this is a dynamite, hugely efficient model. 
It doesn't have a lot of moving parts. It's very easy to understand. You work within a defined dealing range. If you're bullish, you're looking at previous day's highs. They're your targets until you get to the highest one in the last 20 days. If we go outside the last 20 days, you refer to your 40-day IPTA data range. Everything we say here for shorting is reversed. You look for the lows, the previous daily highs. In this case, when we're bullish, is reversed. Now we're looking for previous daily lows. And each one of those previous days low is an objective for price sweeping. When we get to these previous days highs, we start doing what? We look for 10, 20, and 30 pip grade sweeps. The level here is uh, 83. And we have essentially 20 pips run. The high is... 6803. So two pips variance. Who's going to complain about that? It's easily understood and forecastable. I just created a word, forecastable. <laughs> Nonetheless, you don't need anything more than this. And if you never graduate beyond this, you still are a success. You don't need all of the higher level models. You don't need to do model two. You don't need anything, none of those other things. So my point in this is that every one of you should be able to do this model. And if you're now just being exposed to it, you have this full year to start practicing with it and looking for it. In your studies, if you cannot be a part of this and, and use, you know, use it, go back through your analysis and see if this doesn't form every single week. There's something there every single week. We know that the weekly uh, range is going to be bullish or bearish generally. And even if it closes mixed near the opening of its um, Sunday or Monday opening, it's still going to have an expansion higher or lower. And we look for clues to, to get that understanding where we can capture some of that weekly range. We don't need the open to the low and then get all the way up to the high. We don't need that whole entire move. We just need a portion of it. So if we know that we can go back and look at previous price data like this, it helps cultivate confidence and it helps remind us that, hey, look, you know, I have a winning method. I know a winning method. But do you have the discipline to follow it? And then once you capture it, do you have the discipline to stay out and practice learning your other things and other models, you know, at your leisure? But what you're doing right now, everything you're doing right now is building your confidence, yes, or your experience. So if you're not engaging price or acquiring a lot of experience by studying past data with this type of insight, you know what to do now. You know exactly how to find setups. There's no reason why you cannot find a setup. Daily chart, what's your dealing range? Are we in a premium or a discount? Um, you start with the uh, swing points if you don't know initially, and but you're not going to get the, the best entries. The ideal entries is what I just showed you here. That underlying price structure is the key that unlocks most of your high probability scenarios. There's other scenarios that don't create that, but they're a little bit more trickier, and you learn them with experience. But the one I showed you here, which is the reason why we talk about breakers and bullish order blocks, all those things become effective when you look at the underlying narrative of the price action that's being shown. Go back and look at every instance where it is essentially shown. It's staring at you right now in, in a 15-minute time frame. We have a low, a high that ran. So this high here has been breached here. Then this short-term low has been breached here. We trade back to it. That's a sell. What are we looking for? A previous day's low. What's the previous day's low to this high? Right here. This candle's low. I was in here jawbone and it's right in front of me. 67.47.7. So we want to see it go below 47. It swings all the way down to 45. Bingo. That's the pattern. This is the thing that you're looking for. That missing piece, that's it. That's all you're looking for. Remember, I gave you a clue in the free, uh, the free lessons on YouTube. I gave a, a lesson, and I just couldn't remember where it was. I put it in one of the commentaries. 
stating that if you just trade breaker to breaker, you have it. And people are like, oh, yeah, yeah. show me that uh, that central bank dealer's range instead. <laughs> so, again, it's all going to click if you understand what you're looking for. OK, uh, same scenario here on this particular day. If you use the same phenomenon that's outlined, OK, we have to have a low. And price breaks the low when we're in a discount. This low is violated. Then price runs through, clears the high. Once this high is broken, when price trades back down into it, there you go. There's your buy. Bang. This, folks, is your million dollar ticket. If you do not see it right now, watch the video a few times. Then go back and look at every high energy turning point, and you're going to see this. Because it's the accumulation, manipulation, distribution pattern. That's it. You've always heard me use those terms, accumulation, manipulation, and distribution. That's it here. We have a low energetic rise. Blows through it, runs the stops, and it engineers a breakout for short selling and neutralizes sell stops on longs. Price runs back through, breaks market structure. Traders are going to see that as resistance. They're going to try to sell it. They hold price around in there, run away, then come back. They're going to say, okay, well, we broke this old high here. So now support is broken. It's going to be bearish, and it's not. OK, this whole movement is exactly what you've been looking for. Everything in this is repeatable. It's something you'll see in every high energy price move. And I don't care if it's crypto. I don't care if it's bonds. I don't care if it's um, futures, index trading. It's there. It's there. It's there. OK, so. I can't tell you to go back through it and really listen to the study because everything I just taught you here, if you take this and apply it to every other time frame, it works. You'll be able to swing trade. You'll be able to position trade, short-term trade, day trade, or scalp. And even though this model is designed for scalping, I teach you how to leave a leader in, in other words, a partial portion of the original position in case it runs and it gives you the full daily or weekly range. There's nothing better than that feeling because many times on that little small piece, you'll make more than you made on the larger hole that you've taken partials on and they will help pay for all the mistakes and smooth out that equity bump that you created with some measure of drawdown. So hopefully you found this insightful and until next year, we'll come back to price action model number one then and I'll give you more insights.